Thank you for joining us. This is the P3 Show. We are on our third episode. I have the none other than the incomparable Milo Grant, our district councillor. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for being here and thank you for accepting the invitation. My pleasure. Thank you. And today we have a three, if not four, important subjects that I will be going through, which are public assembly on non-local issues and possibly local issues, as well as the impact that it has on our city and uh, public safety in general, diversity, equity, and belonging here in our city, and what that means for all of us as well. And I think I couldn't pick not any person in this planet beyond our district councillor who's very, very well versed on this subject matter. So thank you again for being here. And thank you we'll, for having me. Thank you. And, and we'll, I, I just want to say uh, the, my district is Central District which is yes. wards two and three. Correct, correct, Old North yes. Bend, downtown area. Yes. And since the redistricting, a uh, part of the King Maple area. Right, yeah. perfect, perfect. And um, I wanna begin with how you are doing, first and foremost, kind of lay the floor out for uh, you. Kinda well. Just, and then we'll dive in, into the public assembly as sure. how you see fit and what, because a lot of stuff has happened um, yes. since I started attending you know, city council meeting and since you've been in public service, you know, there's an uptick in people being pissed off about a lot of issues that are going on in our, in our world, in our city. And so from how you feel to how, what, what your thoughts are on how to have a better conversation publicly, both at the council, what's happening at UVM and so on and so forth. I just want to kind of get your thought on everything. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Um, I uh, I guess I'm starting uh, this new council off being very, very hopeful. Uh, we have a change in leadership uh, with the election of Mayor Mulvaney Stanek. Um, I am, I'm, I'm very happy she won. Um, I'm proud that she won. I'm proud of our city and our community who could recognize that um, she is a leader that can help us get through some very difficult times. Um, I do blame the prior administration for a number of things that, um, especially along public safety, I think there is some bad decisions made um, around public safety and also delay in, in decision making, not accepting certain realities and moving too slowly uh, that I think has gotten us here, but I think right out the bat, um, our new mayor is showing that she's gonna be transparent about things, starting with the budget. Um, I know budget is not on our discussion list, but right. it is very important, and um, next week, I'm not sure when this will be airing, but uh, the Board of Finance meetings are Monday nights, and then they call it the Marvelous Nights of May, okay. and that's where all the departments <laughs> submit their budgets. Okay. And when you go to the City of Burlington's website and you click on calendar, mm -hmm. you can see the meetings that are coming up. And when you right. click on the meeting that you're um, interested in, so say a budget meeting, mm -hmm. you can click and you can see which departments are submitting their uh, budgets, making their budget presentations. Okay and you can see the documents. Mm -hmm. You can open them up, and I encourage Burlingtonians to be doing this. Right, it's very absolutely. important that residents um, know where the money's being spent, have an understanding. This year, I'm gonna have a much better understanding. Last year, I was, you're elected, and then your first meeting in April is like organization day, and then you have like two other meetings, and then all of a sudden, you're in budget season. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was really difficult, so I really encouraged um, our newer counselors, um, by the progressives I'm working with, I'm like, you have to be prepared for this, because that was one of my regrets. I was not fully prepared. Mm -hmm. And so saying that we have things that we want to work on, right. but we've got to get past the budget first. So, right. um, And I think that just the transparency, and I encourage everyone to sign up for the mayor's newsletter. Mm -hmm. They never received it from the previous administration. <clears throat> Definitely sign up for the new administration's newsletter and uh, be on your front porch forum uh, at the bare minimum. Um, if you have an Instagram account, uh, please follow myself, follow progressives, yes. parties. We're trying to do 
uh, get out more information, Correct. explain things. Yes, uh, we've got yes. some great staff that are doing some great work in terms of breaking down the subjects. This is what's going on for the upcoming meetings so that people are more informed. Right. Um, right. I think that we have to we have to find a better way for people to be informed, but people have to want to be informed True. and have True. to want it's to It's got to take. be balanced for sure. Yes, they have Absolutely. to take the steps to be informed. Like a lot of people were upset about neighborhood code. Mm -hmm. They said there weren't enough meetings. And I definitely complained at times that, um, you know, under the prior administration, we did not get information mm -hmm. in a timely basis basis okay. and suddenly we had to vote for things that was definitely a problem at times but that was not a problem in neighborhood code okay um okay. they that team did a really good job right. they did meetings with mpas they okay. did public meetings they managed a separate website for it uh they were out there and uh, for months mm -hmm. and when the final code mm -hmm was uh, put forth right, what, right. what it would be. Mm -hmm. um, and I shouldn't say final because there's still gonna be some amendments and other things. Okay. Um, our last meeting, we had a um, conversation about that. Okay. But, I'm one, but what I'm one wondering is that there's a lot of frustrations from folks attending meetings and yes. folks going to the MPA meetings. And I'm wondering is, is because the information is being shared in the right platforms, is it because people are not necessarily seeing this, or is it people are getting hyped before they show up to meetings? I or think. Or what, what is the combination that I is driving people to much more? Yeah, I think if we use neighborhood code as an example, when it was finally presented, these are what the changes are going to be, people were taken aback. Even people who saw some of the presentations, it's like, okay, what, what did you think they were talking about? Right, right. Did you, everyone's like, well, that's not gonna happen here in my neighborhood, this is not gonna happen here, it's not gonna happen here. And it's like, it needs to happen in the whole city. We need to be very real right. about what's happening in our city mm -hmm. uh, with regards to uh, the housing crunch. I mean, it's affecting anyone who wants to move here, especially to move here to work, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this, uh, it's a big issue that, employers complain about. People do not have a place to live, so they're not taking jobs that are being offered to them. Um, it crushes our economy because the average, average Burlingtonian doesn't shop downtown outside of maybe the restaurants and the coffee shops. A lot of people don't, I go into the hardware shops sometimes, but a lot of people like down, don't feel that downtown is for them. They feel it's for tourists, and that's a problem. Um, and when you have our rents that are going so high and just squeezing everyone, mm -hmm. you don't have that extra income. Okay. And so if you don't have that extra income to spend, it's not going to be spent. Mm -hmm. So um, we, and we can't be so reliant on tourism. I mean, okay. tourism is very important, but to have such reliance on it mm -hmm. is, um, is not okay. Right, right. So... Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I thought about it um, was the how the lawmakers, representatives, counselors, um, or just people in public service better communicate with residents on all these things that you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, not to regurgitate the past, but right, right. looking I at... Think, I think it goes back to, at the bare minimum, everyone needs to be part of their front porch forum. Right. Period. Right. Though they if do they're two, listening, two if you're listening and you're not on front porch form, <laughs> bare minimum. Yes. Um, mayor's newsletter, <laughs> calendar on city council. You don't have to watch the meetings. What about your you newsletter? Can, do you have one? Um, I don't have a newsletter. Okay. But I do. We're doing more posts. Yeah. We're doing more social media, so we're doing more posts on front porch form. I am probably going to go into Reddit because some people have talked to me about that. I've been well, on you know, it. it's not uh, it, 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 it's it's it, it, you got to be prepared to to take it, but there is a population that that's where they go. Okay. And the Burlington sub is very busy. It is very busy and there's good, bad and ugly on there. Okay. There are at times very legitimate concerns and feedback that people give. Right. I go on there and I see what people are thinking. Yeah. Um, I, I occasionally do comments. It's like, if I do it, I gotta be committed to doing it. Mm -hmm. But someone's like, why don't you post the meetings on there? And I'm like, huh, okay. That is another space that people go to. So yeah, maybe that is, is a place and are people gonna, some people are gonna troll, but other people might be like, okay, I'm gonna look at this. and. Right. 
you know, for everybody that posts, there are people that don't, okay. but that read the information. Okay, but I'm wondering how can can counselors better um, be, you know, more agents for letting people know, hey, this is a better way to communicate and not, because sometimes even if you go to subreddit on, uh, on Burlington, you see yep. there's a lot of viciousness going on. No matter what you post, there's like always, it's not so much of a pushback, let alone the city council meetings. Online, offline, everybody's like, a lot of the time people blame on the uh, pandemic, but I feel like yes. this is something that was brewing <clears throat> underneath and then it just kind of took off. Right. Where now, whether you post online or whether you show up at a meeting, somebody's there to just to put you down. Not because they care about the subject yeah. matter, but no, they no, just don't that's, want... That's very true. And I'm I think, wondering how counselors can be better agent in yeah. kind of toning that down a little bit and say, hey, this is the information that's available. Let's work on something and right. you know, something I, to that effect. I think it goes back to you can't force people to get the information. Okay. The information is there. Okay. Um, the city's, I hate the city's website. I've been vocal about that. Yeah. I look forward to the site being redone. Right, it's a really but awful they website. Have, they have made significant improvements. They used to use a program called Board Docs. Okay. We now use something called City Clerk. Okay. Civic Clerk. Right. Um, and so when you used to go to the calendar, mm -hmm. you would have to scroll mm -hmm. up and down. Okay find the meeting when you clicked on the meeting you didn't always get right on that meeting okay. it was it wasn't as easy as it should have been mm -hmm. now when you go to the calendar it looks just like a calendar okay you see all the days of the month you see all the meetings you can go backwards to a, a previous month mm -hmm. and then look at something you might want to see and when you click on the meeting you're taking right to the meeting. Okay. So you're taking to the minutes, to the agenda, and that is really important. So even if you don't want to watch the meeting, right. and we are working on making sure that the meetings are being attached, and a lot of them are now. That was a kind of bumpy road. Mm -hmm. One of the things behind the scenes that I was right. getting loud about, love town meeting TV. Yes. <laughs> People can go to Town Meeting TV's YouTube page, but we can link that meeting right, right in Civic Clerk mm -hmm. so that everybody has everything. Right. And people can make a decision like, oh, this was a topic. Maybe I'll jump ahead to the meeting to hear that particular topic. Mm -hmm. People have to be active in their democracy. Correct. People have to, they're going to sit back and be surprised all the time and not be paying attention. So reading minutes, you can get a lot out of reading minutes. And um, it's something that I, I do because I, I can't follow, you know, given the fact that I work full time and then I have certain meetings, I'm on three committees. It, it, you, you can't follow everything, but I do try. You know, we have an a incident where, uh, regretfully, one of our developers um, cleaning up after the windstorm we had last winter mm -hmm. went on city property and did some serious damage to a trail because they weren't communicating with the parks department. Mm. So I was actually on looking at a conservation board okay. meeting and looking at those minutes while they're mm. talking about that. How much is it going to cost mm -hmm. to replace these trees that were uprooted mm -hmm. uh, because that's more money right. and a time where we have this budget shortage and they should be held responsible right, right. for having over what I feel was overstepping, and I'm sure there'll be more conversation. But that gives you an idea of the things that people can find. You can't, you can't force people, but people can't complain if they're not actively involved. Mm -hmm. And at the bare minimum, you can read meeting minutes. Right. You can look at the agendas. You can have an idea. There's information there. Um, and it has been made easier. Like once you go on the calendar a couple of times and look for a couple of meetings, I never log in on the back end. I always visit from the public view. Okay. Because that way, if I can't find something easily, right. I'm giving feedback. Right, right, right. And You're I'm saying. from the public's perspective. Right, exactly. I'm like, hey, these meetings aren't getting attached. Mm -hmm. If I want to go back and look at this meeting. Right. I want to see it attached because yes. it's supposed to be attached. It's supposed Absolutely. to be uh, part of the, it's called the, uh, the media attachment. And it'll have the link to um, the meeting. And not all the meetings are uh, regretfully covered by Town Meeting TV. And okay. I'm looking into um, 
is on my list of emails to do this weekend with regards to the Public Safety Committee. Okay. Right? You know, the Public Safety Committee, you can't see on town meeting TV. Yes, yes. You can see some of the older joint committees. Right. And you can see some of the working sessions. Okay. But the regular Public Safety Committee needs to be available on town meeting TV. But it is available um, on Civic Clerk. Yeah. Now, before we move on to the next subject, I want to just go into the context of non-local issues. Because sure. I, I well, notice a lot of times what whips us a lot tends to be non-local issues. There are some local issues, of course, that gets mm -hmm. people's attention, uh, like the uh, issue that happened with the former equity director when they were let go. That was a local issue. Mm -hmm. But the issue that is happening in the Middle East, a non-local issue, though it affected folks that live here, right. right? But I was wondering, how can we better have a better assembly, as it were? Sure. Right? While sharing our frustrations with you, in the council, mm -hmm. but at the same time have some sort of a, a decorum, as it were, during that frustration, like the way right. people behaved during the last uh, last years. Um, so, the way they shared their their frustrations. Right. So there's there's a few things. Um, I do disagree with uh, the issue of what's going on in the Middle East and. Um, what's happening to the Palestinians, the, the slaughter, the level of death, innocent women, pregnant women, children are the majority of the victims here, innocent men, the, that you would look at a pregnant woman, you'd look at an unborn baby and say, that's a terrorist. Um, I feel from a capacity of our humanity, that's a local issue, but also, it's different. Like someone said to me, oh, you don't care about the Muslims in China. Actually, I do care about the Muslims in China, but our government is not using our tax dollars to send billions of dollars and weapons to China mm -hmm. to oppress their Muslims. Right. That's the difference. Okay. The government of Israel receives billions of dollars in funds and weapons. We can't provide school lunch across our country mm -hmm. and in our communities. We can't provide health care right. to all of our residents. Right. We can't educate everyone, give people free education. Mm -hmm. So that does make it local because this is a situation of the amount of our money mm -hmm. that leaves our city, state, and country okay. um, to support this this ongoing war. I also feel that it... it oh, I don't mean to interrupt you, and I apologize. Sure. I, I get that part of the, 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 the subject, right? But I'm wondering uh, just the behavior and the... Yeah, just, yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely get to that. Okay. And, and, and then, you know, the three young Palestinian yes, men yes, who were shot, I mean, that just brought it home and made it as local as, as it can okay. be. Now, I um, had a lot of issues under the pr previous administration because, quite frankly, um, our former mayor did not handle issues of race well. Okay. Did not handle issues of conflict well. It was a very political animal. Everything was about politics. It was always politics over people. Okay. And I think that that is why people felt the way they did and came in in the numbers. The certain conversations were not handled well. They weren't handled respectfully. And that led to a lot of these meetings where people would come in and be very, very angry. Got it. Um, and I <coughs> hope that we will see less of that because we're gonna be more thoughtful, I think, about, I think we're already more thoughtful about the meetings, the length of the meetings. Um, and I think that we're going to have, we have a, ma a new mayor that's going to be more thoughtful mm -hmm. about how she addresses things um, and how she talks to people. I think she's already just a, a, just a far superior communicator. And I think that speaks to her experience, former city councilor, um, state legislature, 
uh, labor organizer, you know, she knows how to deal and work with all kinds of people. Perfect. And I think that will help. I think also, though, um, all of us on the council, regardless of our uh, political leanings or backgrounds, have to respect democracy. With regards to the resolution uh, to put an item on a ballot, that should have been a simple vote. That should have been a simple vote. The signatures were gathered. That's not an easy thing. People feel like, oh, any crackpot can go out there yeah, yeah. and give. No, you've got to get a certain percentage. Right, right. You've got to get out there and door knock. Anyone who wants to do something as a joke, they're not going to do that work. And they're not going to make sure that signatures that aren't good are, are that, that might need to be cured mm -hmm. because someone thought they were registered, but they weren't actually registered or things like that. Um, so we we have to really think about things like that. It was an insult to democracy mm -hmm. to have a vote, to vote that down. Okay. That was really bad form. And of course, people were angry. They had every right to be. And in a case like that, people needed to express that. And since that happened, look at the level of what's happened. We're now over 100,000 dead and injured, and we have a famine going on. So it's worse than it was before. Um, I, if, if we bring forth another resolution, we have to look at the wording on it. We have to look about how we we present it. Okay. Um, because so there's a resolution no, but, in the picture. Uh, I mean, I think I think so. I mean, I think we have to take a stand. I mean, this is when we talk about what the students were doing, right? When we talk about uh, the encampments here and across our state and across our country. We are looking, uh, it was not lost on me. I remember being a child mm. and my parents explaining to me what had happened at Kent State. Mm. The fact that students who were protesting the Vietnam War, War were murdered on their campus. Mm. This is happening around the anniversary of that, mm -hmm. which happened, I believe, uh, May 4th or 5th in 1970. Mm -hmm. I remember the news. I remember there's that one photo of this woman with her hands up in the air over the body of a fellow student. Right. So we are, what is happening there, and we're already engaging in terms of our country. Right. Um, and, 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 and troops, are. it's another one of these things. Are people paying attention to what's right. going on? Right. So it's not something that's insignificant. It's something that really affects people. Um, yes, it, the level of anti-Semitism, is that rising? That is. Uh, Islamophobia, is that rising? Yeah, it is. It's not because of the protests, though. Mm -hmm. It's because of the conflict. Got it. Got it. The conflict is the root cause of this, and that conflict's been going on for the better part of a century. Okay. You can't go in and move indigenous people, move them out, and then move, move people in and think it was going to go okay. okay. It's never gone okay. okay. There's always resistance to that. There's great old video if people want to go on YouTube and, and Google Truman on uh, the founding of the state of, of Israel. He's like, I don't know what's going to happen. He's just throwing seen, his hands up. I've seen the Truman Show, the movie, but I haven't seen that one. Yeah, th but, this was uh, President Truman at the time. Oh, I see. And, yeah, and okay. so he's making comments, and he's got a map, and he's kind of like, oh, I don't know how they think this is going to work. <laughs> and I, it, 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 it'd be funny if it wasn't so sad. Right. So I think, though, uh, people are addressing things locally that are important to the future of our country, and our state, and our city. Okay. Um, because we haven't we, and, and we that, haven't had anything that's going to affect us. This is going to affect us if okay. this continues to get any worse, if any other countries uh, come in. But in a nutshell, yeah. uh, people need to voice voice their concerns, and the council needs to um, handle certain issues right. better. Right. Uh, needs to be people over politics. If you're doing people over politics, that means you're being more mindful about your communications. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, that tees me off to the next subject, which I think kind of correlates to the first subject, public assembly, um, public safety. Yes. So that has been a very, to some, touchy subject to talk about, but also a very delicate issue to deal with in our city. Um, do you see improvement happening 
um, on different aspects? Because I know the fire department is really doing an amazing job with the, uh, what was it, CSR? Fire department. <laughs> um, and, and, and I've run into them because, you know, I work at the transit center, a manager over there. Yes. And they're out there in ways that people fully just no, don't no, understand. I, I see them on, on the uh, Church Street Marketplace. Yeah. I see them at, right by the transit center. They, they stop by just to check if everything is good and they keep moving on, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And but I'm wondering, because also the, you know, the chief wanted to have hire new more people in his ranks and get that number going as well, from what I understand. There's also a new diverse department that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of CSOs that are Nepalese yep. or, yep. you know, young females or so on and so forth, so mixed and whatnot. Yep. So I'm wondering in terms of the incident that are happening, I'm noticing that there's also a little bit of numbers coming down. The overdoses, I think up to 200 from what I've seen on the news as well recently. Yes. But so, what are your thoughts on those, this whole matter? Yeah, the, so. The, uh, a lot. There's a lot. A there's lot a lot to, to unpack. <laughs> yeah. um, I will talk about the fire department for a minute. So when I was on the police commission, yeah. I actually started to get a sense of the ways that the fire department was um, operating and stepping up. Okay. So there was a big issue with dispatch. At one point there was the possibility that there would be this quote unquote regional dispatch uh, f for too many reasons to go into. It wasn't really welcome and it, it, it just seems like it's not gonna happen. It's, it's gonna f fizzle out. But some dispatchers left, uh, left because of concern for their jobs, um, left for other reasons. So uh, our, our dispatch numbers went dangerously low dangerously low. And so at one point, the uh, police department said, we can't handle fire dispatch anymore, a uh, dispatch. Fire has to help with their own dispatch. Mm -hmm. And I thought that this was really like, wow, this is, and, and at the time we were getting a, complaints mm -hmm. related to issues of dispatch where okay. people weren't, were calling in, mm -hmm. weren't getting help calling in with what they considered priority one because um, our police department un operates under a priority response team, right. which you can find online. And if you can't, just email me, I'll point you to <laughs> yes. that. So everyone should know what that is and what types of incidents fall under that. I agree, very but important. But it's very important. So we had a priority one, we couldn't right. get a response, why not? We were getting that right. type of thing and we were listening to calls and uh, there wasn't the best customer service. Um, let's call that customer service in terms of how talking to people, responding right, to right. people. Yeah, I, I, but, I had a really bad experience with, with dispatch before, really. It was just awful. Yeah, awful it, it, it was, and sometimes it wasn't dispatchers. It was, it was other people, it was officers in charge, okay. and it was just like, okay, why would they say this to people? You know, I wish I could give more specific examples, but I'm not allowed to talk right. about complaints. I do believe we should talk about complaints publicly in an anonymous fashion right. to right. give examples to the public true, and true. to give um, a hold our police department more accountable. Right, right. But I saw the way the fire department's like, okay, we got to deal with this. Let's put a plan in place. And they did. Um, you should really invite Chief LaChance okay. someday. I, I promise you, it'd be yes. a fascinating conversation. Yes, yes. No, um, Or Kyle Blake. Um, the, so I was like, wow, they are, they're running with that. And so then I became a counselor and I was on the public safety committee. And I said, now that I'm a public safety committee, I need to know as much about the fire department as well, because like you, I'm seeing them out there, seeing them in the park, seeing them in all the different places. So I started learning a lot about what they were doing mm -hmm. and that, um, you know, they have some similar things where they've had retirements and they've had some people left, but they keep maintaining right. um, their, they, they, in terms of how they look at recruitment, like we had one of our uh, public safety committee meetings, a person who works as a, uh, on recruitment there, very interesting conversation, the different ways how they're going out in the community. Uh, the police uh, department just did a new video about recruitment. It's a really, really good video. It's on their YouTube page wow, okay. online. Yeah, um, I'd like to see them get more things out there. They are making some content, but not, I, f I feel, and I have been talking about this in terms of community engagement, mm -hmm. there's a 
needs to be a better way to effectively drive people mm -hmm. to that content and right. get that content out. I, um, so the community response team that the fire department did, I think that's fantastic. You know, having them come up with the ideas, the team looking at an issue saying, we can't have this wear and tear on these big vehicles mm -hmm. for these type of calls. We can have a smaller vehicle, a truck, we can outfit that truck, we can uh, have, you know, they have wound kits, for examples, mm -hmm. because the xylazine it was causing these wounds right. with people who don't have access to red, uh, regular medical care. Mm -hmm. So just really thought out, brought it to their chief and had it up and going in no time, mm -hmm. in no time. We just have to figure out a way now to more permanently fund it. We're using opioid settlement funds. We have it right now funded through June, so we have to see what their budget looks like because I believe that they have proven that this is an effective response in the community. Now, I think with what they're doing, we have also had some very successful um, arrest uh, with the Burlington Police and our federal partners that have taken down some serious drug traffickers. Our city right. was targeted in a right. way that I don't believe a lot of people understand. Okay. Literally having particular gangs, Southern Vermont being targeted by gangs in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. we're being targeted by gangs from Philadelphia right. who know about the substance use disorder crisis here. Mm -hmm. And they've come up here right. selling these huge quantities of drugs that are primarily fentanyl mixed with other things. Now, um, hitting some of that Philadelphia supply in these trafficking arrests has reduced the supply that has a lot of the xylazine in it. Okay. So this is kind of anecdotally. Okay. It takes a few months for all the data to catch up, right? right, right. Um, but that's what people feel we're seeing. But having said that, mm -hmm. even though we're seeing this dip, mm -hmm. people are still kind of, yeah. what's gonna happen this summer? Right, right. Right, because we still have activity. Mm -hmm. We still, people still finding needles everywhere. Yes. Um, I will admit, I haven't seen as much as I used to see in 2022 and 2023. Right. And also with the drug distribution, being at the transit center and just in and around there, I used to see a lot of people exchanging it. Yes. I have seen less of that effective, I would even say, as early as November 23. And through now, I don't see a lot of people doing that. At least right. I don't see it anymore as right. much as right. I've seen Right, We don't past. see, but we do still have um, a lot of residents complaining about activity. Okay. Um, in and around their homes, right. gar garbage that's being left in and around their homes. Even the pods too. Um, to their folks that outside within around. the pods, they they manage things in the pods, but okay. outside of the pods, there's been a lot of complaints okay. about that. Um, but there was also uh, a drug house that wasn't that far mm. from the pods that also had a big arrest that was done a few months ago. So hopefully. Um, what, what has to happen is that, that these people, that new people don't come back in. Right. We've had a big situation where we've had a lot of these drug ha houses operate for some time. Mm -hmm. Even when the a police department was properly staffed, right. just some of them operated with impunity. Mm -hmm. And everybody knew. Um, so if you say it only takes a few months to make a case, is that, that, so that bothers me too because right. I feel like we hear one thing but then we get another, okay. you know, what people see, what's allowed in some neighborhoods, but not allowed in other neighborhoods. Right, right. Um, that's part of the equity issues in our city. Uh, we have a terrible issue, of course, with unhoused. Vermont right. has a very high, high nationally. Mm -hmm. um, and not everyone who is unhoused right. suffers from substance use disorder, right. or I'll call it SUD for short. Correct. And regrettably, people make that, people are frustrated. Mm -hmm. We hear about the term compassion fatigue. It right. is a real thing. Right. And they're making assumptions. There are people who are in house who are just trying to survive mm -hmm. and, and not get hurt mm -hmm. out on the street. And they're not participating in this, but people assume that they are. I think we also have a lot of issues with some people who have been addicted for so long they don't have the full access to resources. Like um, somebody emailed me like, we're just throwing resources. We have never had enough resources, period. We don't. The Howard Center 
has had a staffing shortage. The Howard Center has had to cut back some of their programs. Um, we're trying to hire one, uh, another parks ranger. We see the shortage with uh, the police. We are no better off mm -hmm. with our police department what? than we were a year ago, and that's a grave concern. But we have, we have, in terms of people, a lot of staffing shortages. We have the state. We have poor leadership mm -hmm. in uh, the state. Go the governor, he doesn't care about Burlington. I really believe that. When he talks about Burlington, he is so disrespectful mm -hmm. and so dismissive. He has very old-fashioned ideas. It's not like former Governor Shumlin who realized at that time the severe opioid epidemic. He's like, we have to be doing something different, and we have, this is our number one crisis. He, he made it part of a state-of-a-state state speech, and we got things under control. Everything is, wasn't fully eliminated, but it was under control, and then we had something new post-COVID, and the governor doesn't care. He doesn't care about these people. Um, the, the state is getting millions of dollars in opioid funds and is not pushing it out fast enough. You can't get other programs up and staffed if you don't know you're going to have the money to pay for them. Why are you sitting on that money? Right. So one of the things the city council did was, you know, we have lobbyists. We have, a, I, I think, a better relationship with the lobbyists. We get regular updates from the lobbyists. The lobbyists knows that this is what Burlington wants to see. You know, we need to push legislation that will allow an overdose prevention center. We need to look at our laws because our Vermont laws right. do not, um, they don't meet what's happening now with regards to car theft, right. uh, repetitive retail theft. <coughs> Excuse um, me. And so they're working on that mm. uh, bail. Um, and I don't, I, I, I'm very, um, the way I feel about bail is that bail keeps poor people in jail. Okay. But at the same time, there are some people that should be held, okay. whether because it's of repeat, repetitive things, whether because they've hurt people. Uh, violations of their terms of release repetitively. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a legislative hearing and the Orleans state's attorney, you know, had a horrendous case. Someone with seven open cases mm -hmm. making terrible threats, violent. But because he was not likely to flee, he was happy to stay in this community and terrorize people. Yeah. He was allowed to be free. And I'm on that meeting. I'm like, I'm a progressive counselor and I think this is crazy. <laughs> and everyone laughed, but it wasn't funny, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, but so they're talking about these things, you know, right, even right. about that gentleman who's been walking around town naked. Yes, yes. Vermont yes. says if you leave your home, fully naked he's allowed you're allowed to do it right right now if he was clothed and he walked down to church street and took off his clothes that's a different thing right so right. we have these laws in vermont and people think we're too permissive we're not permissive no one's asking for permission right Did anyone ask you for permission no one's asking me for permission if yeah. someone wanted to shoot you know put a needle in their arms and ask me for permission i said no right. let's go get you a sandwich and a cup of coffee and talk about life choices and what options that you have. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I am concerned. I'm gravely concerned about our uh, police department. And I, um, I'm concerned that we hire people and people. And there are retirements that are occurring. Mm -hmm. But these people are not leaving the profession. Right. They are, in fact, going to other places, be it the University of Vermont, be it... Um, other agencies, uh, Shelburne, they're not leaving the profession. They're mm -hmm. leaving Burlington. Right. So what's going on? Right. I what's going on? And I think that needs to be better examined. And I hope um, the new mayor takes the time to I, do that. I wanted to ask you, um, the H-72 harm reduction, I think, has passed the House already? Yes. And but, going to the but we're not home free. Okay. Um because basically everything we need, Governor Scott just wants to veto it all. Okay. Do you think it's going to be vetoed? I think it's going to be vetoed. Okay. And so will there be a, ve a veto-proof majority? Yeah, I think more legislative representatives, they are seeing what we are seeing. We have, Burlington makes the media. The media likes to talk about Burlington. Mm -hmm. There are murders in other parts of the state. There is drug activity that is very bad in other parts of the state. 
and it's starting to affect more people mm -hmm. because we haven't done enough okay. to control it. Right. Um, so will there be enough for veto override? I am really tired of him. Um, I hate his Twitter. I just, well, I won't say Twitter. Was it Donner X Scott? now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whoever he's got, do I don't believe for one minute. <laughs> Why? He does his own posts. No way. <laughs> okay. But I, I go on there. I guess, I guess I don't know if that makes me a troll, yeah. but it gets me mad because he's, you know, pontificating. Yeah. And it's like, where are your solutions? Mm -hmm. All you do is criticize. Mm -hmm. Criticize, 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 and you have no solutions. Okay. And that is how he is governed, and for some reason he remains very popular. But I think that the people of Burlington really need to, to wake up because he has not served us well. Mm -hmm. And it's um, and it's dangerous, it's dangerous. I, I was wondering, um, we got about a, about a minute on this topic. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, since you've been in the council, how do you feel public safety has gone in terms of the direction that it's taken? Are we going the right direction or are we going the wrong direction? I think um, I think the police department needs more support in a way that they don't want it. Okay. You know, they they don't want oversight and accountability. Oversight and accountability has failed. We had one of the mayoral candidates who was very much against it, uh, worked hard against it without realizing you're actually hurting the department. You know, there's things that are not okay in that department that need to be fixed. You're hurting that department mm -hmm. by not understanding how important this is. I feel um, that we have to move faster. We are moving forward in other areas. So with what the fire department is doing that we just um, discussed, community response team, we have the CARES team that hopeful, hopefully will be up and running soon. That is the CAHOOTS model from Eugene, Oregon that's been talked about in the community for a very long time. That will be a mobile unit, um, hopefully staffed by clinicians who are nurses. Uh, the, the final staffing will be announced when it's done, but to have a mobile unit to really go out, mm -hmm. work with people suffering from SUD, work with people who are unhoused right. and have the overlap. We have um, these alternative positions, the uh, community support liaisons, the community uh, service officers, building those. Uh, that's actually helped feed a little bit into the police department because some of the CSOs have gone to the academy. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, what's called CAPE, which is housing these professional mm. uh, positions that are non-sworn uh, uniformed officers. Right. That diversity <clears throat> in our public safety system is very, very important right. and will help us more effectively um, handle certain types of issues um, in our city. Thank you so much for that. So we have another just about five minutes left on this topic, uh, which I think is definitely deserves more than that, and that is equity and belonging. Um, yes. It's it's a very subject that is, I'm definitely sure, dear and close to your heart. And it is. As is mine as well. I, people and say incredibly racist stuff to me. Which is unfortunate, which is regrettable. Which is which really, is like, terrible. it's amazing. I'll be like. Right, which is terrible. Okay, and I'm the only black person here, so it must have been directed <laughs> to me. Yeah, like, which, people have said, said, you know, someone talking about, Someone said to me, uh, this is just an example, this was really egregious a few months ago. It was also a very kind of intense encounter, so it kind of stays with me. Um, but to say, like, everyone needs to do uh, whatever the police tell them to do, especially the blacks, I'm like, really? the blacks? That's a racist term, folks. Somebody said that to you? Yeah, people use the term the blacks around here. It's not okay. But in this person, it's almost like saying it. the N word, but saying differently. If, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. racist. Yeah. It's racist. So if you hear someone using the blacks, tell them no. But so he's like, especially the blacks. And I was like, wow, okay. And then he said to me, he wished things were the way they were 60 years ago. So people say really outrageous things, and you're just supposed to take it, you're supposed to be okay with it, you're supposed to get over it. 
And I don't operate that way. I mean, I was very quiet about a lot of things as I got moved into this public space as a, a person serving on a committee and then a person serving on a commission and then running for public safety. Then I just reached the point where I'm not taking this anymore. So I'm very, um, I do have a boundary and I do talk back, right? And I do, I do suffer the uppity black woman, the angry black woman. I get, I get that, you know? And I have this encounter with someone who ends up being on the cover of Seven Days. Oh. And I call the reporter, who I know because I've, they've talked to me about public safety issues over the years since I've been on the commission. I was like, yeah, I was just like, I just had this counter and I told them what happened. And they're like, oh, but I vetted them. I said, you talk to any black people? Oh, uh, well, no, I spent all these hours with them. I said, were there any black people there? You know, I, it's, it's just that people show who they are sometimes when they're around other people. Our children are having a terrible time mm. in schools. Um, there's, there's a lot of racism that's going on there that's just not okay. Um, I... We are a rapidly diversifying community. We do not look like the rest of Vermont. Yeah. You know, where we are filming today is in the Old North End, right. which is one of the most diverse areas in the entire state. Right. You know, our area and uh, parts of Winooski. When you look at the children, <laughs> the background of the children in our schools, mm -hmm. we have um, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent BIPOC kids, depending on the schools, the uh, elementary and the middle schools, right. feeding into the high school. Mm -hmm. So the high schools, I think, around the high 30s in terms of BIPOC kids, and it's only going to go up. Th this is our future. This is our future. Yes, you yes. can, anyone walking around in Burlington and downtown Burlington will see a BIPOC person right. who is not a tourist. Mm -hmm. Yeah who lives here, goes to school here, works here. We are part of the future. Yes. And uh, that's if our young people don't leave. Like there's so many young people leaving, um, including my own kid, he's 29. He's like, we have all these people from 25 to early 30s. They don't see their lives here right now and they're leaving. That's another thing, by the <clears> time <throat> the statistics catch up, mm -hmm. it'll be too late and it's gonna be hard to bring people in. We already know we're aging state. We already know we can't get certain jobs filled. Um, but I'm wondering, is it because they feel that they don't feel like they belong here? They're, they're welcome I think here? I, that, they're I, I think for some people uh, that is part of it. Okay. Um, for other people, it's the more practical things. Okay. You can't get a job that's going to pay the amount mm -hmm. that you need right. in order to survive here. Right. Um, if you are going to pay outrageous rents, the quality of the housing is not good if you can get it. Landlords are allowed to get rid of, get away with a lot, you okay. know, because of the pressure that we have of being a, a community that has a lot of students. The student populations have been growing. I don't want to blame everything on the students. I don't want to say that students are unwelcome because I think students are suffering because of this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a survey of, um, there is a, a I think it's called Community Coalition, okay. and it's people who work for the University of Vermont, off-campus students, and then people like me when I'm able to show up, mm. um, other community members to talk about students, what they're experiencing off-campus, how to make, like talking about their move-out days that they have right, so right. to help reduce the amount of garbage and furniture that's left on green belts, et cetera. But they did a survey and their, their sample size was very large, okay. well over 2,000 off-campus students. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about large percentages of them having problems paying rent, having problems being food insecure. Are those buy box students? Uh, those are off-campus students as a, as a whole. Okay. So, um, having problems paying utilities, mm -hmm. significant, like high 30s, low 40s, very significant numbers. Right. So that <clears throat> is all affected by housing and the cost of housing. So this hurts students. So okay. to care about these things is not to be anti-student, mm -hmm. it's to be helping those students as well because this has always, always been a, a student community. It's just we're bled out for housing right now. And what University of Vermont presented for their MOU was not good. It was not good. It was insulting. Right. They have to do better. 
They have to do better. They have to be a better neighbor and they have to do better for their students and they have to do better for their neighbors, which are the residents of Burlington. So hopefully we'll get back to that. I want to support them building more housing. I do, but their enrollment matters. Mm -hmm. Their enrollment for not only undergraduate, but graduate matters. And if you build all this housing, but you're not containing your enrollment until the housing's actually built, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter. We can't get out of this situation. They are part, they're not the only reason, but they are part of it, and they like to see them acknowledge that. I would like to see our relationship with the university be a little bit better. I don't like the way they treated the student protesters. Um, I thought that some of what's been happening in the country, I didn't want to see here. We don't need, we need them to be, be listened to. It's very similar to what happened um, back when I was in student, you were talking about anti-apartheid, um, mm -hmm. you know, wanting boycott and divestment in um, apartheid okay. and not supporting South Africa for what they were doing. Right. So it's, uh, it's about humanity, it, it, you know, there's a, the morality to it. Mm -hmm. um, how humane are we? Are, are, are we human? How do we treat other, other humans? Right. So how do we treat, how do we make this a good city to work in? Mm -hmm. You know, people have worked for some departments in the city, not felt welcome. So there's education that needs to be done at that level too. Um, and people, younger people I think do a better job, but not always because there are younger people when you talk about, especially in elementary schools, talking to a constituent who had to be in court dealing with 10, 11 year old kids getting temporary restraining orders. Wow. Yeah, and the parents yeah, that's are driving the hate. <clears throat> okay. If you let children be, yep. they do a better job than we do. <laughs> but if yeah. you have parents driving hate, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, very regrettable. Right. I think we have a beautiful city. Our diversity is what makes us beautiful. And I think people need to appreciate that. And I think people need to understand its importance. There are definitely a lot of people who don't understand right. the importance. And unfortunately, there are regrettably a lot of stereotypes. Thank you for that. I try to break stereotypes, but I'm, I'm stuck with that angry black woman thing. Because I am, I get angry. About and, and a lot as of it. you should, really. And I want to, I want to thank you for, for that as well. Um, <clears throat> just for next thirty seconds, uh, Juneteenth is coming up. Yes. And I know it's going to be an exciting time. It and is. And I was wondering, do you have anything exciting that you nobody knows that you would like to share? Um, well, up? I think that they're starting to talk about the uh, the monument, the Embrace and Belonging Monument, oh. that will be put in Dewey uh, Dewey Park, okay. small park in the Old North End. Okay. They're starting to lay the foundation for that, oh. and um, oh, I believe the date is June fourteenth for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, there'll be a ceremony. Okay. Uh, okay. Just follow me, email me. Okay. Well, we'll be doing posts about it. Do we get a statue and, of you as well? Uh, 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 <laughs> no, not yet. Okay. I know this project was a little bit controversial. Okay. Um, and that is because regretfully, sometimes different departments in the city don't do a good job of communicating with the neighborhoods. Got it. That has been something that I'm trying to be vocal about and help. Okay. And um, I, I'm excited for this monument. I think it'll be a wonderful addition to our area and I do understand some of the neighborhood concerns about the space that it's going to take up but I think that it's going to be workable it will be a place where people can sit mm -hmm. I think it can be a destination for people That's why good. should other parts of the city get art I mean they're doing all these major art on Main Street as part of right. the Great Streets project and why can't we get something like that here? True, true, true. something um, that brings people together for sure. Yes, yes and so the um, the Juneteenth event this year in downtown Burlington, I think it's gonna be another great event to really bring people together, to educate people together. Uh, together, It's gonna be family friendly. That's nice. Um, that I'm very excited wonderful. for it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Councilor, District Councilor, <laughs> thank you so much for- Are we done? <clears throat> Are we out of time? 
I think I think we are almost out of time. <laughs> but uh, but thank you. I mean, we we could definitely talk endless because there's a lot to cover. To be honest with you, and I'm hoping there's that you can come back and marvelous nights of May. Yes. Know what's going on with your city budget. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go to the city of Burlington's website. Click on the calendar. Look for those special board of finance meetings. Mm -hmm. Don't have to watch the meetings, but read your minutes. You can look at the budgets. It's going to be really important. Thank you. Thank you for that, really. And I think it's incredibly important that people follow that and kind of take to heart and check out the websites and everything. Oh, um, oh, oh, I, I am remiss. Yes, yes. May 18th, Saturday, May 18th, yes. we're going to be doing a big cleanup in the Old North End um, at IIA and SA, Integrated Arts Academy and Sustainability Academy. We're going to have dumpsters. There's going to be an opportunity for people to get rid of items. There's been complaints about tires that have been dumped. We're going to have supplies to pick up needles. So we're going to be looking for volunteers. Uh, please reach out if you're interested or just show up at either IAA or Sustainability Academy next Saturday starting at 1030 a.m. Perfect. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Counselor. Thank for you for letting me here. get that in. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, um, well, thank you for joining us, and I hope the counselor will be back again to talk more about equity again and uh, a to. lot of city matters. I think this is incredibly important for everybody to hear that directly from the counselor. And uh, I always invite you to watch the show and uh, submit your questions if you have to the counselor directly here. Instagram account as well. You can reach out to her. Yep. Yep, and I'm on uh, IG. <coughs> on IG. <laughs> yes. I never and thought I would do that. I did start doing that to campaign. It's really effective because there is, there's people on Facebook, there's real generational things, right. uh, differences with how people get their And can I say, I actually like your website. It's very clean, very straightforward and everything. It needs to be so. updated too. So that's, that's I've got to be working on that. Um, that's my next project. Yes. <laughs> And uh, thank you for joining us, and I wish you, everybody, a wonderful day. We're going to be having the mayor join us on our next episode. So thank you, and have a wonderful day.